Very excited to have with us today Kim Kelly. She's an independent journalist doing incredible work, uh, labor reporting. She's been on the ground from the beginning covering that coal miner strike that uh, no one effectively was covering the mainstream press That's until right. very, very recently. We're going to get to that in a moment. She is also writing a book that you're definitely going to want to get. It's called Fight Like Hell, The Untold History of American Labor. Great to see you, Kim. Good morning. Great to be back. Um, so we wanted to start with uh, Richard Trumka passed away suddenly, very unexpectedly. I think he was 72 years old. He's the president of AFL-CIO, came up through the Mine Workers Union. Just talk a little bit about his life, his legacy, his death, and what you think is going to come next at the AFL. Right. I mean, this was a massive shock. Like he was you know, not a young man, but not necessarily in what we think of as an old man. I remember getting the news um, so I have some friends who work there. I started getting these text messages like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, whoa, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that because, you know, you mentioned the minor strike in Alabama. I was just down there um, on the 4th and they had a big rally. And Richard Trumka, he had initially wanted to be there, but I think he had his grandson's birthday, a family thing. So he sent a video message. And so he sent a big video message that was played on a big screen of expressing support and solidarity to these workers and that ended up being his final public remarks wow. talking to a big group of striking mine workers and their supporters and veterans of the Pittston strike, which was kind of his claim to fame back when he was super involved with the mine workers before he ascended to leadership at the AFL-CIO. And that, I mean, that really struck me. I think he was, he was a complicated man with a complicated legacy, but that really stuck with me, even as someone who's been critical in the past of things that, you know, positions he's taken, things of that nature. But just seeing, you know, your last, your last sort of official appearance before you die is supporting your brothers and sisters from back before no one knew who you were. Like, that just, that hit me, you know? And now we're looking at an interesting couple of years because we have Liz Schuler, the secretary treasurer of the AFL CEO. She's now the acting president and the thing is, the AFL-CIO is meant to be having a convention next year, and that's when they were going to officially determine Trump as replacement. And there's been kind of some some rumors and some politicking about multiple people who wanted that job. And so now I think that's going to be much more interesting to see because Liz is already there, and I think there might be some shakeups. But regardless, I think you know we lost. As, as a lot of the, the people who eulogized and said, we lost a line of labor, and this is going to be deeply felt. I mean, even the president was crying about it. Like, he's he was a big man that made a big impact. And I think the next era of labor is going to hopefully build upon the good things that he did and work on the less than stellar things, in my opinion, that he stood for. So, Kim, let's talk a little bit about uh, Warrior Met and BlackRock. Uh, 1,100 miners were on strike for four months, and there was quite literally zero cable news coverage. There were some print outlets that covered it. There were some independent outlets that covered it, perhaps I included myself. I was one of the people who uh, jumped on as soon as I learned about it. But, you know, shame on me, for because it took three and a half months for me to learn about it, which is, you know, speaks to just how buried this thing has been. Um, what do you make of the media coverage uptick. Is there an uptick, first of all? And then if there is, do you think the coverage has been fair? I think we've been finally, like you said, seeing an increase. I think that really that goes back to them showing up in New York in front of BlackRock. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, to be frank, it was just a lot easier for media people to show up. It's a lot easier to get to Manhattan than it is to get to rural Alabama. And especially, you know, there's a pandemic going on. I understand people not wanting to travel. I don't necessarily understand they're not wanting to pick up a phone, but that's on them. I'm really <laughs> glad people are paying attention now. And I think we've had, you know, obviously the ABC, ABC News piece that just came out, that was huge. And that was uh, the first national TV news segment, like, of we're on month five. Five. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the first one. Wow. But, you know, better late than never is very much a thing. I, I did really appreciate the way that they put that together. I um I kind of worked a little bit with them behind the scenes. They called me up a couple weeks ago, and I kind of I, like I did an interview with them, and I gave them a whole bunch of background. And I kind of pointed them in some directions. Obviously, they did most of the work, but I'm glad that they listened to this, you know, independent reporter who's been on it for a while. And I think they did a good job. And I'm really hoping that 
that'll kind of be the the breaking point and more news organizations will be like, oh, okay, well they covered it. Maybe that's legitimizing this a little bit. Maybe we need to show up because I mean, we're, it's August, right now it's August 9th, that we are well into their fifth month on strike. They are not going anywhere. You know, they're already planning their Christmas toy drive. Like yeah. even if, even if someone is, is looking at this and is like, oh, am I too late? Am I a little, you know, you know, did I miss my opportunity? No, you didn't. Write about it. Call them. Show up to a rally. Like this still matters and it's going to continue to matter. Like it's only, this is really only the beginning in a way, you know, like as some of the workers mentioned in the ABC News piece, like we didn't expect to be out here this long, but we're not going anywhere. You know, and Kim, hopefully, yeah. you're interviewed in the piece. You do a great job. Now that you mention it, I can definitely see your sort of hidden hand and voice um, encouraging mm. them in certain directions in the piece. We have a little clip of it of one of the workers just explaining what he has given to this company and to this mine. Let's take a listen to that. Chris Laurie says the workers kept the mine afloat for years. I give you my youth. I've given you my time. I've worked six days a week for the last 17 years. Weren't you bought a coal mine? You bought an underground coal mine. You knew what the wages were when you when you bought it. We we saved this coal mine. Uh, this ain't the first time we've saved it. We've saved it from fires. We've saved it from explosions. We've saved it from a lot of things. Coal mining is one of the most dangerous professions in the country. In 2001, the number five mine in Brookwood exploded, killing 13. Yeah, these are the, the gaseous mines in North America. You have gas, you have water. Uh, a lot of the working areas is knee deep in water. Uh, it, it's a difficult job, not to mention the dust. You have more dust you know, around the working phase because that's where you're cutting the rock and the coal. According to the CDC, rates of black lung have more than doubled over the past 15 years. The workers we spoke to say Warrior Met Coal provides them with 80% coverage of medical fees. They used to receive 100%. And Kim, one of the things that struck me in watching this piece, which I think was well done, was about nine minutes long and provided some really important facts for people about unions, about how unions lead to, to um, increased pay, about the, struggles, about the struggles of these workers in particular. But it really struck me of like, you know, our union muscles have atrophied so greatly in this country that even to do a story like this, you have to really remind people like what a union is and yeah. why people join a union and what labor militancy looks like and why you'd be on strike and why you'd be willing to do this for so long and what solidarity is. Um, there's just so little coverage. Uh, I remember when Stephen Greenhouse took a buyout at the New York Times, he's now back as a reporter there, but it left the Wall Street Journal as the only major paper in the entire country that even had a labor reporter. So that's one of the struggles of covering this story is that there's so little public understanding left of what labor movements actually are and what they mean and why they're important that you have to kind of build the story from the ground up yeah i mean we don't learn about it in school i only knew yeah. about it a little bit because i'm from a union family and that's that's a privilege at this point like you said union density is down so far but one thing i will say is that i think we're in kind of a a renewed period of interest in labor reporting and labor news and labor struggles. Like even since before the pandemic and we started having the essential worker discourse, there are a lot of younger, more diverse labor reporters out there that I think are doing a good job. You know, Greenhouse is still out here. He's, he's the OG, but we also have a lot of younger writers with a lot of different perspectives who are covering this beat, who are really devoted to this beat. And I do like to attribute that in part to the organizing wave that we saw in digital media from the Writers Guild of America East, my union, and the News Guild that kind of kicked off in around 2015 with Gawker and Vice, where I used to work. Like the fact that we organized so many digital media shops meant that a lot of digital media journalists learned about unions and they bargained a contract and they started to understand why this was so important when maybe they mm -hmm. hadn't had that exposure previously. And the digital media industry being what it is, most of us get laid off all the time. And so every time that happens, all of these labor conscious pro-union people are sort of disseminated throughout the industry again, like you know dandelion seeds. And some <laughs> end up at new publications, bring that perspective, and hopefully they unionize it. 
So really this this whole there's a whole new generation of people who are pro-union, who care about unions and who want everyone else to know how awesome unions are. And we keep getting fired, so we keep ending up on different publications. That's a really interesting point. So, uh, Kim, I read in the Media Matters piece on this that hedge funds actually increased investment um, in Warrior Met when they saw that there was, like, no media coverage about it. So, of course, um, Warrior Met cut pay, cut benefits, weaken safety measures, and they've been accused of unfair labor practices time and time again. Do you have any knowledge on that? Is it true that hedge funds actually increased investment in Warrior Met when they saw that the media wasn't touching it? You know, I would believe Media Matters if they reported. I hadn't heard that specifically, but it wouldn't surprise me because, you know, what that it makes sense because hedge funds are evil. And if they see that this is happening and no one is paying attention, like, oh, we can get away with something else because they're always trying to get away with something. And so that just illustrates why it's so important that people, regular people and media are paying attention to this strike because we don't want these, you know, expletive deleted to get away with this. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really well said. And last, Kim, um, you know, what are the updates from the strike? What are their hopes? What are their expectations about how long it's going to last? And uh, what are the tactics? The, what's the latest with the tactics the company's employing? Well, thankfully, I haven't heard of any new attacks. So that's good. That's a good week. But, uh, you know, they're hunkering down. Down, they're digging in. They are, like I mentioned, the women of the auxiliary, they're starting to plan for Christmas. They're expecting this to be a long fight. You know, some of the workers and some of the their spouses have been finding side jobs to supplement their strike checks. Like, they're trying to make this work, basically. And the big rally that they just had in Brookwood, which had thousands of union members from across the country, uh, from multiple unions, not even just theirs, to come out to support them. I think that was a big boost. And honestly, I'll tell you, I saw something there that kind of illustrated exactly their attitude going forward. They were, there's a line of people signing these sheets of paper saying that they were willing to come back and get arrested if they needed to for hmm. blocking the mines, or whatever else might be planned. And I have a feeling this is not going to be the last we hear of that. So watch out, Warrior Matt. All right. Stay tuned, as they say. Um, Kim, I know you're trying to get your book written and you're like you've sequestered yourself to focus on writing. So we really are super extra grateful for your time. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You're the best. Our pleasure. All right, guys. And thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you, Kyle, for hosting. Kyle will be back Tuesday. He'll be back on Thursday as well. As always, um, if you want to support Independent media support what we're doing here so we can continue to bring you stories like Kim is doing on the ground there in Alabama. Please subscribe. It's $10 a month. You get the show an hour early. Um, you get pr content that nobody else gets, which long-form interviews, all that kind of good stuff. You guys know the deal. Uh, the link is below. So if you like what we're doing and you are able, please consider supporting us. We love you guys so much, and we will see you tomorrow.
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.